As a streamer, it's natural to think about the next cool piece of tech that you want to upgrade to. And eventually, you're probably going to come around to the fact that you want a new microphone. And like most streamers, your mind probably shifts towards the Shure SMB, which for good reason, because it's probably the most popular XLR microphone for streamers right now. Or if you've been paying attention to things recently, you probably think about the new Beacon microphone, which is basically a direct competitor to the Shure SMB, but it's a USB microphone and it costs less money. But if you're anything like me, you're probably quickly brought back down to reality once you look at your bank account and say, it just can't happen. Which, if you don't have a microphone yet, it probably leads you to buying a more budget-friendly option, like the one I have here, the Fifine A6T, which is a new microphone that Fifine has sent me themselves. A full review to that is linked above right now. Or if you already have a microphone, you're probably just sticking with the one you have now. But either way, it does not matter because today we're going to be going over some of the key filters you can use inside of OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS to make your current microphone sound as professional as possible. Now we are going to be going over some of the basic filters that you should already be using and if you're not implement them today and we're also going to be going over my favorite plugin that I'm sure most of you do not use right now and it probably enhances the sound quality of your microphone more than the rest of them combined so go ahead and get your headphones get your streaming software open and let's improve that microphone okay so here we are inside of OBS studio and the first thing we're going to be doing is going into your microphone settings so go ahead and click the toolbar right here go to your filters and as you can see already, spoiler, these are all the filters I am currently using on my $50 microphone to make it sound as close to a professional microphone as I possibly can. And I'm going to be going over each of these filters, what they mean, what they do, and why you should be using them. And another thing to know is you do need to make sure that you have these in the exact order that I have them because each filter affects the one below it and above it differently and the first filter we're going to start off with is this one right here the vs2.x plugin and it has enhanced the sound quality of my microphone more than the rest of my filters combined have done for me and the reason i love this filter is because as you're going to see you can manipulate the sound of your microphone to sound pretty much like any microphone you want it to sound like so when you first go to add this filter which by the way is go down here to the plus button and you can click the vst2.x plugin It'll bring you to this right here, and right now mine says it's choosing the Marvel GEQ. Yours, when you do the drop down, will just say, please select a plugin. It won't have this option right here. So what you're going to do is go down into the description down below right now. You're going to click the link I have. That'll bring you to a web page that has the download for this plugin. And once you're done downloading it, OBS will instantly recognize that it's there. And just to show you guys what it looks like, it's going to be a web page that looks just like this. You're going to go to this download right here, click on it. It should download extremely quickly. And then basically from here, just like any old download, you're going to follow the prompts. And then the only thing that you can uncheck here is this AAX for 64-bit Pro Tools. I don't have Pro Tools, so I don't need it. And then depending on your system, if it's 64 or 32-bit, you want to make sure those are checked as well. And then it's going to ask you if you're sure. You'll click yes if you have the right things. Make sure that's going into your program files. And then you're going to click install. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do it again. But that's the process. And then once you're done, you can come back to OBS Studio. You may have to restart OBS Studio itself. I don't remember. but once you do restart it just to be safe, come back to VST, open up this drop down, and you should see Marvel GEQ. And now here's where the fun stuff begins. And now from here, you're going to open plugin interface. And it's going to bring up a pop-up window that you can drag around anywhere you want, but it looks like this. And from here, you can see I've already manipulated it to my liking. And basically what this is doing is this is your low to high ranges. Now, if you watched a full review of this microphone that I did, which I highly recommend you do if you're in the market for a budget microphone, then you'll know that I talk about how this picks up more of those mid to high ranges. And when compared to another microphone that I have, sounds a little bit muffled and tinny. So what I really want to do with this microphone is obviously bring out more of the bases of my voice, the deeps and lows of my voice, because that's what is very appealing to a lot of people when they think of the Shure SMB. It already does a great job of picking up those lows and that podcast sounding voice. But at the same time, I don't want it to be super radio-y, podcast-y sounding. I also want some life to my voice. I want to pick up more of those highs as well. So I really need to brighten up the sound coming out of this microphone. And because of that, you see this curve. I'm bringing up a lot of the basses. And as we get more towards the mid-tones, I don't get as aggressive with it. And then as you notice, as we're getting back towards the highs, we're pulling those up as well. So 
what I'm doing here essentially is, as you can visually see, I'm bringing up the highs in the microphone as well as the lows pretty drastically. And when it comes to the midtones, I'm pretty much almost leaving those untouched. And depending on what microphone you have, it might pick up your voice a little bit differently. So you can really play around with this and figure out what is the perfect ratio for you, your voice, and your microphone. But this is where I like it. I think it really does a great job of bringing out a little bit more of the bases in my voice, like I said, and also brightens it up, gives it more life at the same time. And once you have it to where you want it, there is no save button anywhere. You can just simply exit out of it and it's going to automatically save that in OBS Studio. And as far as this check mark right here, you don't need that open. That just pretty much brings that same window we just looked at back up every single time you open up OBS Studio. And this, I feel, is a great way to start off the edits and filters with your microphone because it is going to give you that base point of what your microphone is going to sound like to your audience. And then from there, you can adjust things like how loud your microphone is, background noise, and stuff like that with the remaining filters that we're going to focus on. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is the compressor. Basically what the compressor is doing is that no matter how quiet you're talking or how loud you're talking, the compressor is evening out those levels that you're staying around the same spot the entire time that you're talking. This way, if you kind of are whispering or talking quietly or really yelling, you're not hurting your audience's ears. You're not making it super hard for them to hear you. And as you can see, probably because I'm a little close to my mic, when I'm talking, I'm coming in at around negative 10 to negative eight ish. And then when I'm peaking with those like sounds and like T sounds, it's obviously spiking up to more of like a negative six db and honestly that might be a little too loud for my liking so in order to adjust that like we just talked about we could take this threshold and bring it down and if we're bringing it down to about negative 18 you can see that now i'm not peaking nearly as high my average is now a little bit lower and honestly i think it might be a little too low so i'm going to bring it back up a little bit and this is kind of the process that i want you guys to take is make sure you are fiddling around with this. Make sure you're talking through the entire thing. Make sure you're talking very loud and make sure you're talking very quiet. So that way you can see exactly how it is affecting your voice. And as you saw, I talked a little bit loud right there and I also talked a little bit quiet and it stayed relatively around the same spot at, at around negative 10 ish. And that's pretty much where I want it to be because I know that when I get louder, it's going to go a little bit above that and I don't want it to go too much higher than that. So. Look at all my settings here. Pretty much everything besides threshold should be a general base canvas for everyone to start out at. As far as ratio, attack, release, output, gain, all those things. You can basically copy and paste my settings, but then when it comes to the threshold, like I said, it depends on how far away the mic is from your mouth. It depends on how well your mic is picking up your voice out of the box. It depends on how loud of a talker you generally are. So that's where I'm saying, go ahead, play with the threshold, bring it up, bring it back down, find a nice sweet spot that is sitting around where it's sitting for me, around that negative 10 on average. Now, because the compressor is doing what I said it's doing, where it is making sure that it's compressing those highs to not be too high but also bringing up those lows so it's not too low it's going to be bringing up a lot of noise and background noise that we do not want and because of that we have to counter it with an expander basically what the expander is going to do is going to help cut out those lows that the compressor is trying to bring into your mic so things like if you're typing on your keyboard if you're clicking on your mouse if there's like slight noise in the background from a fan or something like that that's what this expander is for is basically to help out the compressor a little bit to kind of work hand in hand in making sure you're finding that perfect balance within your microphone so again here is your base canvas for things like your ratio attack release output gain output gains typically always zero and then when it comes to your threshold like i've been saying it's really going to be specific to you your microphone how loud you're talking how loud your environment is around you so you're basically going to want to find that sweet spot now we do have to be careful because if you make this threshold too drastic so say i'm clicking my mouse you can kind of hear that a little bit so you don't want to hear any of that then you bring the threshold way up here because my voice is barely coming through at all and it probably sounds pretty bad. So when it comes to the expander, I think you have to be a little bit more careful than with your compressor because if you're going too drastic with it and trying to cut out too much, you're going to be cutting out parts of your voice as well. One issue I've run into in the past is that the beginnings and ends of my words are sometimes cut out. Mainly things like S's, they don't get captured as well because they're a little bit softer to start or end words. So instead of me saying the word stay, it probably sounds like 
okay. Things that I've noticed in post-production when editing, I'm like, wow, it really sounds like I don't even know how to speak because it's not picking up those letters at all in my words. So like I said, be careful with it. Find the right sweet spot for you. I found negative 30-ish, 33 to be generally my sweet spot based on my environment. Then after that, we're coming to the noise suppression. This is basically going to work as just an extra precaution to make sure that background surrounding noise around you is completely taken out. It can tell the difference between a voice in the background, a fan in the background, things like that, as opposed to your own voice. So it's less of like the keyboard smacking things and more of like the background environmental things. For some NVIDIA card users, mainly the newer NVIDIA cards, you will have an extra feature right here that says something along the lines of NVIDIA and you can use that. I know it's very good for a lot of people. And instead of using your CPU, it's going to be using your GPU. I do not have a newer NVIDIA card. I do have one, but I don't have a new one, like I said. So I'm stuck with these two options right here. And basically this RN noise, good quality, uses, as it says, more CPU, and it can actually be pretty taxing on your CPU. It does do a good job at removing your background noise. However, it comes at a pretty hefty cost and I myself game and stream on the same PC and my CPU is already almost pushed to the max. So I use the speaks option, which uses a lot less of your CPU and it's a lower quality version, but you have more manipulation when it comes to what it's doing. Whereas this one, there's nothing you can change. You're basically fully reliant on it knowing what to do. So for me, speaks is the right choice for my current setup for you. You may have two PCs, you may have one that just has a monstrous CPU. Go ahead, test it out. Just be careful not to bottleneck your CPU. And then last but not least, we have a limiter. This limiter, you may be wondering why the heck do you even need it because basically what it does is make sure your voice isn't getting past a certain threshold. So whereas I said the compressor is kind of bringing your loudest points down so it's not going past a certain threshold, it's not necessarily a stop safe. When it comes to super drastic, sharp, sudden, extremely loud noises, this compressor won't always do the job of making sure it doesn't go past a certain threshold. So that's where this limiter comes in as a kind of like a security blanket. So I have mine set at negative six dB. So that way I know no matter what, when it comes to something happening that's super loud on my stream or me yelling super loud, it is never, ever, ever going above negative six dB, which is where I like to keep it at. And I think you should as well, because anything past that is really loud and you're just going to hurt your viewers ears. So just always make sure you're having a limiter on. You can also use this filter on other audio sources as well, like your desktop audio for your gameplay or your teammates voices and discord, things like that. Just to make sure that no matter what's happening within any of your audio sources, that is never ever going above a certain threshold. And that's pretty much it. Just so you guys can hear exactly how these filters are affecting my voice. I'm going to quickly turn off all these filters, give you a quick line and then turn them back on, give you the same line and you can listen to exactly how much it helps your voice. So right now we have all of our filters on and be sure to like this video if you're finding it helpful, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video just like this one. Okay, now we have all the filters off and be sure to like this video if you find it helpful, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video just like this one. Feel free to rewind and listen to that side-by-side -side I just did as many times as you want so you can really tell the difference between with filters and without filters and how it can drastically help your relatively cheap microphone. And these are filters that I feel no matter what microphone you're using, whether beginner level, intermediate or professional, you should be using because they only enhance the quality of your mic. But anyways, as always, if you guys have questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. I love to answer any of them. If there's any other tutorials out there you guys want regarding audio, video, Streamlabs, OBS, OBS Studio, anything like that, be sure to also leave that down in the comments. And like I mentioned before, go and check out the review I left of this Fifine A6T microphone. It is a microphone meant for those on a budget or just getting into streaming and a full breakdown of the ins and outs of this microphone. Plus an unboxing is in that video. I'll leave it also in the description down below. So if you guys found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on those notifications, and if you found this video helpful, you might find one of these two videos helpful. Nope, oh, these two videos helpful. Go ahead and check them out.